Hey y'all, it's time for the Lowland Kids Lap Neck Gown Tutorial. So to get started, the pattern pieces you'll need is the front and back main body piece, couple sleeves, cuffs if you're doing cuffs, um, and your binding. Um, so the first step is to take that binding and attach it to the neckline, kind of shoulder area, the lap neck. <laughs> um, your longer one, I believe, goes with the front and the shorter one with the back. Um, so go ahead and match those up. I'm going to show you how I like to apply binding. So one thing that I often do is I'll measure where the center is, the middle point on the binding piece, and then the middle point on my neckline. And then I'll match those up. And then I will also pin at the very beginning and the very end, so just on either end. Um, I don't always do it this way, but this is one thing that I think is a great thing to do, especially if you are a beginner to doing binding, so that you know that you are evenly spacing it out. So you can set it up like that and then go ahead and serge it on, or if you do not have a serger, use a zigzag stitch. Um, and oftentimes at these curves, I'll kind of stretch it a little bit and I'll, I'll show that. I'll show that as we go. Okay, so this example of the serger is me showing what I do when I do not pin it. <laughs> so I just kind of stretch it slightly as I go, um, but I do, so on the curves I, I pull a little more, in the center part I don't pull as much, and then I match it up to the end piece to make sure that everything will line up well, and I just kind of, yeah, just stretch it to fit a little bit, and then finish it off. So it's really pretty simple, you, you don't need to overthink it much, um, but practice always makes perfect. So once they are attached, then you can fold the binding up and over that serge line. This is a single fold, and this is an example of a double fold. You fold halfway down towards the serge line, and then a second fold over the serged um, edge. And it creates kind of a more narrow binding look. And so lately, I've personally been loving just a single fold because I like that you can um, choose the thickness of your binding, uh, but do whichever you prefer and go ahead and get it all pinned in place. And once that's done, you can take it over to your cover stitch machine. Um, if you do not have a cover stitch, you can also use a double needle or a zigzag stitch. It doesn't be a stretch stitch. Um, if you just do two single stitches to make it appear like a cover stitch, it will not turn out great. I do not recommend doing that. So don't just try to do a straight stitch. Do either a double needle or a zigzag stitch. Okay, so once your binding is applied, then take your front piece and lay it right side up, and also grab your back piece and lay it right side up and on top of the front piece. You're just gonna layer it on top and then find the notch or marking that you made um, for both the front and back pieces and match them up and pin or clip it together and do that on both sides. This is creating that lap neck. It's kind of instead of having like a normal shoulder seam. Um, I'm also sticking a few more pins in just to line it all up. One tip that I have for any like beginners is when you have all these extra threads from the two different pieces and everything, make sure that you pull them all out to the side so that when you do go serge it or sew it, you can trim it off. You don't want those threads to get caught into your seam anywhere. Um, so first we're going to just baste the stit, um, baste the, the lap neck shoulder seam area, the sleeve, <laughs> um, to make sure that it's it stays well in place. As you can see, that's done. A base stitch is just a long straight stitch. Um, and then once that's done, then we are going to um, apply the sleeve. So to do this, I like to fold my sleeve in half to find the center of the shoulder seam. I mark it with a pin and do that with both um, sleeves. And then you can line that up with the marking that was already there from before. And if you didn't have that marking, just fold it in half to find the center piece of that one as well. And then you're gonna place it right side together, um, match it up and stick your pins in there. I will sometimes pin the front and back. You can pin as little or as much as you want. 
um, but pin it on place and then we're gonna go ahead and search that on as well. One bit of advice I do want to give is that when you are sewing this, make sure that all of your binding gets into the seam. I did notice that in one area, uh, some of my binding was a little short and so it didn't catch and I was worried that it was going to look funny or whatever, so I had to go back and fix it. So that's just one thing that I want to point out. Um, I do kind of show you like an up-close example of what I mean. So under here, this is where my binding had not made it, so I went back and stitched it again to make sure that all of my binding made it into that seam. So just double check that before you move on to the next step. Depending on how you're gonna finish your garment, if you are just hemming, then now is a great time to hem, fold it up three-fourths of an inch. If you are doing cuffs, then you can go ahead and serge your cuffs right now. Usually I fold them right sides together and just sew straight down. However, I learned a new tip on the Lowland page that I wanted to mention. So you fold it in half like normal and then fold it in half again. You heard that right, you're gonna do this <laughs> and create the cuff right off the bat. So fold in half again, just like you would after serging and then serge that together, like all four layers. And when you're done, um, it will look like this. So they're like already folded <laughs> and there's four layers total. Pull, pull one piece of fabric, the other three on the other side, flip it right side out and look, you have a cuff. It's like already folded in half for you, ready to go. It's awesome. I just feel like, I don't know, it felt like a speedier way of doing cuffs. So I thought this was pretty cool. Um, if you pull it out of the middle, it won't work. So just to show you an example, you got to pull three of the fabrics on one side or like three layers on one side, one layer on the other side. And there you go. Now, um, if you are doing the mittens, I did not film it with this tutorial, but I filmed it before and I'm going to insert it now. So I'm going to have my audio be playing from the last video. When doing the scratch mitten cuffs, I wanted to show you how to assemble this even though I'm not doing it myself. So the blue tape represents the right side, um, the plain is the wrong side. So we're going to fold the long piece in half so that the right sides are now showing and then we're going to fold the short strip in half so that the wrong sides are showing. Next, we're going to take the long strip and fold it down again, but not quite all the way to the edge. You're going to leave about a quarter of an inch space because that is going to make it the same size as the uh, smaller one. So you can kind of line them up, make sure they're about the same. Um, then you're going to open up that short strip once again, place the small one inside and fold it back down over top making a little sandwich almost. And then we're going to sew down both sides. I just did it on my sewing machine because I was worried about the thickness of my serger. Okay, great. Now, just so you can make sure you did it right, you'll see that folded over edge on the inside. That should be right side showing. Um, I think all right sides are on the inside, but it's hard for me to tell with my fabric. Um, and then when you fold it right side out, um, it becomes this little cuff and um, I'm just showing you how you would insert it onto your sleeve. And um, you would put it right sides together and I would kind of fold down that one section because you don't want it to get sewn in. You would sew all the way around and then you knew you did it right if that can be able to be folded over as the little mitten cover for the, for the little fingers on your baby. Isn't that so cute? All right, let's carry on. So now the next step is to put um, the gown right sides together once again. We're going to line up the sleeves and the sides and go ahead and serge all the way down both sides. Pretty simple. Just be sure to line up that little armpit seam and you're good to go. Here it is, we're almost done. <laughs> so now I'm going to apply my cuffs. So the way that I do this is I like to just kind of um, fold it in half and find the opposite side from the seam. Um, so it kind of gives me two points to reference and I do the same thing with the sleeves. So just kind of fold it in half from the seam, 
mark it with a pin and that way I can match up the pins with my cuffs and match up the seams together and then I know that I'm applying my cuffs um, evenly. I'm going to be putting my cuff inside so it's right sides together with the sleeve, match up the pins, replace it, and then match up the seams and replace it. And once again, if you have any threads, pull them out, make sure that they are not going to get stuck in the seam as you sew. And then you're just going to sew around that. Um, take it slow. These cuffs are tiny. We're doing all newborn sizes. So yeah, take it easy. If you need to sew it first, um, like maybe with a base stitch, then go ahead and do that. And then in the same run, I'm going to hem the bottom of my gown. I'm planning on doing the drawstring version. Um, so you're just going to hem it three-fourths of an inch. And I'm going to go all the way around. I'm not leaving any gap or anything. If you wanted to add elastic, then leave a gap. Um, so yeah. Once that is completed, we can turn it right sides out and see how cute it is. Ooh, I am just loving it. <laughs> now, if you did the version that has snaps, I'm gonna link a video of where I have done a snap tutorial before using the snap setter tool. And um, I also have one using pliers. I'll find that as well. Okay, so now I'm just cutting a little notch on the side of one of the seams of that bottom um, hemmed portion. I was supposed to cut two slits and I forgot, so um, be sure to do one on either side of the seam there. I decided to make my drawstring just using the fabric from the gown. You can use regular drawstring or just whatever you like. Um, and then I took a safety pin and I'm threading it all the way around. Um, the length of it is totally up to you, so just see what you like. Um, and then, yeah, if you didn't do that second slit, be sure to do it because that's where you're going to... Uh, pull that drawstring out of so as you can see I'm just pausing to cut my little slit if you want to go fancy you can make these into real buttonholes but no need this works pretty well honestly and once you get all of your drawstring through um, kind of even it out make sure that the the two drawstrings are pretty even um, because then on the opposite seam you're going to stitch it in place so that that drawstring cannot come all the way out so it's like stuck inside <laughs> so just right here i just went and did a little straight stitch i went back and forth a couple times to make sure it was really stuck there and once that's done you can kind of cinch it together tie it off however you like and you're done so pretty simple this turned out so cute i love all the different options that it has i love wrapping my son up in it i think um it just is nice and cozy it's kind of like a blanket and pajamas all in the same although i still use a blanket it just assures me that he's going to be nice and warm and he's so cuddly and sweet <laughs> uh, i hope you learned something new if you have any questions be sure to comment below i'm happy to answer those um let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see and i'd be happy to do that for you <laughs> here are some pictures of my son in one that i made for him previously it turned out really cute um yeah it's cozy <laughs> anyway i hope you have a great day you can check me out on social media if you'd like i'm on instagram my name is come create with kim